I almost got prostituted. After my encounter with domestic violence with my baby daddy and life after the abuse and so far and so far, I decided I wanted to take a swing at life by myself with my daughter. I wasn't completely out of the relationship with Joseph. It was like a one foot in, one foot out type of situation. Like I told you I was done, but I'm not really done. Like I want to try independency, but I'm not really ready for it, right? So still being technically with Joseph, living in and out of a hotel room, I got on his computer and got on Craigslist and started looking for jobs. Any type of jobs, anything that was going to pay me. Like, I need to attack this life and I need to attack it right now. So I got on Craigslist and I saw that somebody had an ad posted for a personal assistance. I hit them and was like, hey, my name is Sherelle. I'm interested in the job that you have listed. I'm interested in an interview. If you can hear me back at this email, at this phone number, I'd be willing to come and chat with you. Now, mind y'all, I was fresh into this. This whole filling out job applications, doing this, doing that the right way. I didn't know anything about it. Well, I knew about it. I just didn't know too much. So after about an hour, maybe two, I might be pushing three hours, I got a response saying you can meet me at such and such address at such and such time and we can have an interview. I told Joseph, I said, hey, look, I got an interview for this position as a personal assistant. I need you to take me here, blase, blase, woo, woo, woo. Joseph was like, so where is it? And I told him where it was. He was like, so when you have to be there, I told him the time and he actually took me. So when I got to the address that I was sent, I realized that we were in a neighborhood and we were in front of a big brown house, a nice house at that. So I texted the number that I was given and was like, I'm here, I think. The guy responded was like, okay, come and knock on the door and I'll be inside. So when I got to the door, I knocked on it and somebody opened it. I was like, I'm here for an interview for a personal assistant. Oh, the guy was like, oh, you're looking for such and such in the studio. So he stepped aside and allowed me to come in. When I got inside, a white dude came out of the studio and was like, oh, you're here for an interview, come with me. Now, one thing I did notice when I walked into this house was there was a few other females laying on the floor, wrapped up in a blanket with a pillow under their head. There was a couple guys just out here playing the game, chit-chatting, smoking, and I'm like, hmm, what kind of personal assistant job is this? But nonetheless, I didn't let it scare me and I kept going. So when I went into the studio, the guy ran down the ifs, the ands, the ups and downs, the ins and outs of this job that I was supposed to do. He told me how I'd be getting water, getting papers off the printer, cleaning out the studio, sweeping, mopping, you know, doing what really sounded like housekeeping work, but at a personal assistant rate. The interview was good. He said that we're going to give you a swing. If you want to, you can stay tonight and we can see how it goes. So, of course, I was interested in the job, even though the man didn't tell me how much he was going to pay me. So I told the dude, OK, I called Joseph to let him know I'd be staying the night and that I would call him tomorrow with further details. So the first night there, the guy told me that I could sleep on the couch in the studio and after a full night's rest, he would run down the specifics of everything I needed to do. This is where it gets creepy, y'all. Drop some prayer hands for part two. Two of, I almost got prostituted. So I woke up the next morning not even realizing that the man who owned the studio wasn't even there. So I took that as an opportunity to go back to sleep and get some rest. I hadn't been sleeping considering we'd been bouncing around from hotel to hotel. Falling back asleep, I was awakened because the door had opened and slammed shut. I woke up to the guy saying, come on, let's talk. Let's go over the details of the job. So I got up, fold up my little blanket and everything, put it at the end of the couch, and then I sat there. Like, the man didn't even let me wash my face or brush my teeth, but I guess business is business, so let's get to it. So I'm sitting on the side of the couch waiting for him to tell me what the rest of the job consists of, and he began listing the things that he said yesterday in the interview. But this is where things started to get weird. He began saying that some days he would be tired and would need back massages, shoulder rubs, foot massages, amongst other things. And then he said, some days I may need a little more attention than others. I didn't know what that mean, but you didn't put it in layman's terms, so I'm going to assume everything that you told me that I could comprehend, that's what I'm going to do. So, one thing I did ask him, I said, um, well, I do have a daughter. You know, and I want my baby with me wherever I am. So doing this job, am I allowed to have my daughter with me? He responded and was like, yeah, you can have her. That's no problem. You know, but on the days that I'd be needing the back massages, the shoulder rubs, the deep tissues, whatever it was that I needed, she could just hang out in the living room with other people. Other people, sir? Nah. It ain't no harm in allowing my daughter to watch me to give you a back massage, a foot massage, or whatever it is that you need. So time rolls around, I called Joseph and I was like, hey, I got the job. Everything's cool, copacetic, bring me Jaylee. He was like, all right, you sure? Because I really hate to have to burn anything down behind my child. I really hate to have to go to jail, Sherelle. The man was crazy, but he was serious. I was like, nah, Joseph, it's all cool. It's all calm. He told me everything that I'm going to be doing and Jaylee could be here. I'll have a place to stay and a job. So ain't no problem. 
So Joseph brought me Jaylee. Jaylee came in. Everybody was like, oh, my God, it's a baby. Oh, my God, she's so cute. This, that, that, and the third. You know, everybody was loving up on little Jaylee because Jaylee is one to be loved. So me and Jaylee both slept in the studio on the little couch that he allowed us to sleep in. And then after the few days that we were there, he came in and was like, I need to talk to you by yourself. I was like, okay, shoot. What you got to talk about? He said, I would really like to talk to you without your daughter in here. Sir, I'm not about to send my daughter in there with those people that's in the living room. So whatever you got to say, you're going to have to say it to me in front of her or don't say it at all. Now, of course, I didn't come off that rude, but I was kind of insinuating like, no, I'm not sending her anywhere. Say what you got to say. So he was like, you know, the more necessary, the more in-depth details I was telling you about that I may need. Yeah, I remember you saying it. He said, well, this is the part that comes into play. And that's why I didn't want your daughter here. Drop some prayer hands for part three of. I was almost a prostitute. <laughs> so the guy said, you remember those things I was telling you about that came as part of the personal assistant job, right? I was like, yeah, I remember what you said. And you remember how I was saying I needed my shoulders rubbed, my feet rubbed, and some other things that could come into play. Yo, I'm not slow. What are you getting at? He said, well, you know, I allow you to sleep in the studio with me because that's a special type of privilege. Okay, so does this bring into play why you got these other females in the living room, on the floor, sleeping with a blanket and a pillow, wrapped up like they in some type of nut house? I said, yeah, um, yeah, what's up? He said, well, in order to get the privilege of staying inside of the studio, you must perform activities. And for those of y'all who don't know what activities I'm referring to, he is talking about S-E-G-G-S activities. So I got to scratch my head like, that ain't what the ad said. You said that you needed a personal assistant. When I came for the interview, you told me what you needed done and I accepted the job. I didn't accept the job thinking I was finna have to bust down on all fours for you. He said, so you think that you can come in here and sleep in the studio, get special privileges, sleep in, do this, do that, not have to pay to live here, and I wouldn't require anything? Well, when you posted the ad on Craigslist, you made it seem like you was going to pay me for being a personal assistant and not have to extort me out of my body to be able to justify whatever it is that you got going on in this little bitty brain of yours. So a little bit of time passed because I didn't know what else to say to the man. He looked at me and was like, you know, you ain't got to do it, right? Yeah, I know I ain't got to get you my body. You ain't got to say that. And I came here for a job. I came here for a job. And now you sitting here trying to tell me I need to bust down for you. In order to keep the job, you ain't even paid me for the first day. Hold on, wait a minute. It may have been a weekly job. I don't know. I looked at him and was like, I don't think that's something I want to do. That, that ain't the, the line of work I was trying to be in. You said personal assistant. I was expecting to do assistant job, get paid, and go on about my merry way. He said, okay, you ain't got to do it, but you can no longer stay in the studio. I was like, all right, so where do I go? He said, you can grab a blanket and a pillow. You can go out there and sleep on the living room floor where everybody else is. Sleeping on the living room floor wasn't too bad. It was better than bouncing around from hotel to hotel, potentially sleeping in my car. So I went ahead, grabbed my little blanket pillow, grabbed Jaylee, and I trotted my way right into the living room. He stopped me and was like, hold on, hold on, hold on, let me tell you this. In order for you to stay here, you have to pay me $25 a night. Sir, how am I supposed to pay you $25 a night? I came here in hopes of having a job, and you telling me that I need to pay you to sleep on the floor in the living room. These new clips that I'm about to be uploading to TikTok are from my second book. If you want to know what happened before we got to here, you got to go get the first one. Use code TikTok to get it for $9, ebook only. Subscribe to my YouTube, come back and drop her in. Four of, I was almost a prostitute. So being in the living room, paying the dude $25 a day, I stayed the first day. He came and asked me, so do you have the money? Sir, you know I don't got the money. I just applied for a job that you were supposed to pay me. He was like, so I'll give you till tomorrow. Do you think you'll have it then? I said, yeah, I think I can fandangle up $25 to give you. Now, in my head, I was going to hit up Jaylee's dad and be like, can you loan me $25 because I'm trying to do such and such and such. And then he probably would have given it to me and I would have just gave it to the guy. And then, whew, 24 more hours under my belt for a roof over my head. So that night, he was in and out of the house, in and out of the house. He wasn't really saying much to nobody. And every time he looked at me, he had like this cutthroat stare. Bruh, what do you got an attitude for? You mad because I didn't want to pop open for you? Well, you should have just told me that in the beginning. We wouldn't have been here right now. So day two rolled around. I did end up getting the money from Joseph. And then I gave it to him. Day two rolled around. He asked me the same question. Do you have the money for tonight? No, I don't have the money for tonight. 
So he was like, you got to go. Everybody here pays their money. You haven't paid yours. If you don't pay, you don't stay. So immediately I called Joseph. Nothing's working out. Can you come and get us? What do you mean nothing's working out? I thought you said you had a place to stay. You had a job. Of course, I didn't go into the details about the job because he would have been like, why would you get my daughter and put her in a situation like that? I was trying my best to attack independency the way that I saw fit. I just didn't know that this white man was finna take a turn and try to make me his bottom B or slut bucket or whatever you want to call it. So Joseph pulled up in a matter of like an hour and a half. Don't know what he was doing. Don't really care. He pulled up. I left. I still away. Go see y'all later. Me and Jaylee got into the car. He was like, so what are you going to do now? I was like, I don't, I don't know. What do you mean? What are we going to do now? He was like, so you ain't got no money. You ain't get paid. Like what? I was like, nah, he ain't pay me. And then that money that you sent me yesterday, I had to give it to him in order for us to have a place to stay. Or me and Jaylee would have been out on the streets. So he was like, well, I'm about to go donate plasma. You finna go donate plasma too. Now y'all, this is my first time ever hearing about donating plasma. Now I remember in school, I got to donate blood one time, but plasma, that was a different level. Like, bro, what is you trying to turn me into? So I was driving. Joseph actually ended up taking Jaylee to one of his friends or family members. Don't remember exactly who it was for them to watch her because there couldn't be kids in the plasma donating center. We drove to this plasma center off of Mockingbird. We got out, we went in, and when I was scanning the building, y'all, it's a bunch of people in there that look like they do crack for a living. Like, they was in there fiending for this plasma money so that they can go and get their next fix. We go, we fill out the paperwork. We have to see a doctor, go through this physical, test our iron and blood and all of that. Once we fill out the paperwork, we go and sit down. If you want the next part, I need you to go subscribe to my YouTube, which the link is in my bio. Then come back and drop some prayer hands. And for those of y'all who have not gotten the first book, I'm telling stories from the second book. Links in my bio. I was almost a prostitute. Being in that plasma center, there was a lot of people in there that looked like they was fiending for that plasma money to go and get their next fix. After filling out the paperwork that was necessary, the doctors called me and Joseph over to go and do our little knee taps, physicals, check our BMI, blood pressure, and all those other things. We passed the first part. Then we got to the second part where they prick your finger trying to make sure your iron levels are good. Now, Joseph, I would imagine. All this time I've been with him, his iron was pretty, pretty fine. When they mentioned iron, I was like, okay, I may not pass this part. So the lady pricked my little finger, she put the blood in the little tube, stuck it in that machine, put the top down on it, and it started to spin really, 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 really fast. When it stopped spinning, she pulled it out, and she squares a little bitty drop onto this thing, and she looked through these little binoculars, or whatever you call that thing in science, didn't pay attention, don't really care. She looked through it, and she was like, oh yeah, your blood iron is too low, we can't take plasma from you. Now this is the crazy part, there is a thing called HIPAA, HIPAA law, right? Meaning, you can't discuss or say anything about me when there's somebody else in the room. She sat there, y'all, and said my arm was low and I couldn't donate right there in front of Joseph. Do y'all understand how mad this man got? And guess what he said? What can she do to get her iron levels up so that she could donate today? Dude, are, are you crazy? What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? So the lady ended up responding. She was like, well, you can go and get you some of these liquid arm pills, crack it in half, put it on your tongue and swallow it. Or you can get some the little regular powdered ones, chew it and swallow it. Give it about 20 minutes, then come back in and we'll recheck it for her. He was like, okay, well, we'll be back. We're going we gonna to go to the store. We're going to get some iron pills and we're going to come back. Now, y'all, before y'all come for me, didn't he already buy your iron pills? Didn't he already do this? This was a whole other store. We a year or so into a new life, a, a new style. So don't come for me unless I sent for you. Back to the story. So we ended up going right down the street to the dollar store to be exact. And we got some iron pills. This dude popped out four of them was like chew these and swallow them real quick and drink this whole bottle of water. So being the young, dumb, should have been blonde girl that I was, <laughs> I chewed them and I swallowed them. And I downed the whole bottle of water. So 20 minutes rolled by, we go back in. He was like, come on, come on. We finna go get it tested again. We go back in. We walk up to that same lady. He was like, all right, she took her iron pills. Can you re-prick her and check her levels? The lady was like, all right, what finger you want to use? Because she couldn't use the same one again because it had already been stuck. So I gave her the middle finger. She pricked it. She did the same thing. Put it in the machine. Watch it whirl around really, really fast. Pulled it out. She was like, okay, boom, you're good. You can donate. Go ahead to the back and they'll assign you to a seat. When I get to the back, I'm scared because all I see is a bunch of machines with these little things in it. They go up and down, up and down, obviously pulling the plasma out of your system. So one, I ain't never really been afraid of needles, but all this blood that I'm seeing, and it ain't a monthly cycle, I don't like that. So the lady comes, she sits me in base six. She said, have you ever been stuck for an IV before? I thought I was like, yeah, but they told me I got rolling veins, so it's usually hard for them to find it. She pulled out a needle about big as a pencil. Use code TikTok to get the e-copy of my first book for $9. <laughs>